Stan Gibalisco here, proprietor and operator of the website sciencewriter.net, a link to which you will find in the description of this video. But the purpose of this video is not so much to tout my website as to tout the virtues of a device called an opto-isolator, also known as an optical coupler or an opto-coupler. Now, before I get into what an opto-isolator or an optical coupler actually is, you can kind of get a notion, if you have any electronics experience, you, you can kind of get a notion of how that might work. But before we get into that, let's uh, suppose that you have a circuit where you need a lot of isolation between stages. And I'll show you an excellent example of such a circuit. A bandpass filter comprising a low pass filter like this and a high pass filter like this, connected in series. Now, if you'll go to my uh, playlist in my YouTube channel called Beginner's Schematics, you will find, uh, I believe, a bandpass LC filter video that explains that circuit in my book, Beginner's Guide to Reading Schematics. Well, there's a way to improve on the circuit that you find in that book. The circuit that you'll find in that book looks something like this. Maybe the high-pass filter is first, maybe the low-pass filter is first. But in any case, what you have is something that looks like this. You have a low-pass filter here and a high-pass filter here. Resonant frequencies determined by the inductance L1, the capacitance C1, the capacitance C2, and the inductance L2. These two circuits are such that there is a certain range in which this filter will pass signals, but outside of that range it won't. This low pass filter here has a cutoff frequency that is somewhat above the cutoff frequency of the high pass filter here. And as a result, in between those two cutoffs, both filters will pass the signal, but outside of those two cutoffs, one or the other of them will stop the signal. Below the lower cutoff, the high pass filter will reject signals. Above the upper cutoff, the low pass filter will reject the signals. Well, that's all well and good, and you can choose those resonant frequencies uh, according to the formula for resonant frequency and if you've forgotten that formula let me just reiterate it for you here the cutoff frequency or resonant frequency of an LC circuit F in Hertz is equal to 1 divided by 2 pi times the square root of the inductance in Henry's, times the capacitance in farads. And if you don't like Henry's and farads as units, you can also express the inductance in microhenry's and the capacitance in microfarads. Then that will also, that will give you then the frequency in megahertz. 2 pi, of course, roughly 6.2832. Okay, well, now we know all that stuff. Now, suppose that you have these two filters. And I'll just redraw that circuit, but in block diagram form to make it look a little simpler. You have the low-pass filter. Then you have the high pass filter. And remember, the high pass filter's cutoff frequency is lower 
then the low pass filter is cut off frequency. Now what can you connect between them? We just connect them directly by means of a straight length of wire. But there's a problem with that, and that is that the inductances and the capacitances between these two filters can interact with each other. And that's not such a good thing. You, you want these circuits to perform independently. So you need some kind of an isolation circuit, some kind of a device that will isolate so that you don't get impedance reflections or impedance interactions between these two devices. You want this one to work, and then you want the signal to come out, and then you want this one to work, and you don't want them to affect each other. So what you need right here is some kind of an isolation circuit. Now, there are a lot of different ways to get isolation. A transformer can do it if you choose the impedance values of the coils, but not completely. It can do it almost, but not completely. If you really want no electronic interaction between these two devices, the low-pass and the high-pass filter, what you need is something called an opto isolator or an optical coupler and here is the schematic symbol for an opto isolator and the schematic symbol pretty much tells you everything about how it works it's rare for a schematic diagram to actually tell you how something works but in this case it really does the schematic symbol really does you have two diodes encased. Well, let me try a little harder. Well, you get the basic idea. You provide these diodes with the proper bias, but they're special diodes. This one is a light emitting diode, and this one is a photosensitive diode. So what you have in effect is a light emitting or infrared emitting diode here, a clear medium, like clear plastic. And they're embedded in there and encased in an opaque enclosure so that outside light can't get in and none of the energy from here can escape. You get an opaque enclosure. Then the infrared or visible light from this device right here hits this one which picks it up so that you can amplify this output and get the same signal that you got at the input except the fact that this medium is optical completely isolates impedance interactions from these two circuits there's no way that electrons can flow through that clear plastic, but photons can. And that is how an optical coupler or an opto isolator or an opto coupler actually works. It'll look like a little thing with four leads on it, like a little, kind of like a little transistor, except with four leads instead of three. And uh, you just connect it according to the instructions, the specifications. And you'll probably need an amplifier here at the output to recover the signal to its full strength. But then you can connect your low-pass filter here and your high-pass filter there. And they will operate independently of one another. There will be no interaction between them. So in that way, then, you can get the ultimate band pass filter. And you can cascade low pass filters with opto isolators in between, cascade high pass filters with opto isolators in between, and make your cutoffs sharper and sharper and sharper until ultimately you approach the ideal rectangular response. That's what they call it, a rectangular response. What that means is 
that if you put frequency on the horizontal axis of a graph like this and relative output or response on a vertical graph like this a rectangular response means for a bandpass filter it would mean that your graph would look like that your bandpass range right there your cutoffs infinitely steep and your ideally your rejection extremely great on either side of that bandpass so that is how an opto isolator works Now go to my website, sciencewriter.net. Just click on the link down at the bottom in the description of this video. Stan Jibalisco, signing off for now. Until next time, so long.